Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Mix Tank Live on Pure Mix. My name is Mark Abrams, and today we're going to be going over some of your mix submissions to Mix Tank, our Mix Tank collective on uh, on PureMix.com. So Mix Tank can be thought of like a think tank for your music. It's where Pure Mix members can submit their mixes and get feedback from the entire community. And then every two or every Monday at two thirty p.m. Eastern, I'm on live to to go over stuff here. Uh, before we get started, as always, I have a little bit of housekeeping. This Friday, we have a new mentor coming to the platform named uh, David Bendeth, which is huge for anybody in the rock scene. David's done records with Breaking Benjamin, with Paramore, and a whole bunch of others. But I have a little trailer for you guys to watch, uh, so I don't have to talk about it as much. Check this out. Hey! Whoa! A beautiful day. All the trees scenery the 72 channel ssl loaded with outboard gear today we're going to be mixing a wonderful band of three sisters called the warning go ahead and cry, go with the spx 90 and the ams i sort of feel is magic and if you have the right room with the right compression you can make drums explode it's not necessarily the best thing to have everything in its right place. It's good to have elbows sticking out, which is what I'm trying to do with a band like this so that you really notice certain things. As if it was 1970, old school Rush, all these great three-piece bands, Cream, this band is hanging with them and there's not a lot of manipulation going on. So that is this Friday, um, David Bendith coming to Pure Mix with the warning. It's going to be incredible. That video is nuts. I might have gotten to see it already, and it's absolutely insane. David's incredible. The way that he explains things is, is really fun and really fresh for the platform. So make sure you guys check it out on Friday. It's going to be amazing. Without further ado, let's dive in because we have a lot of mixes coming in already in the chat. Live chat is up above me here. You guys are a part of the show, so please drop your comments on the songs too and let people know what you're thinking. Um, you might have some feedback that I haven't thought of, and that's the great part about doing this as a live stream is everybody gets to be involved, just like on Mixtank. So if you're new to Mixtank, up above me over here, here, uh, you can see that I have Mixtank loaded up. At the top, it's a, a media player. And over on the left, we have a bunch of cards. These are all of the submissions that we have from different users. And then over on the far right of the screen, right up here, uh, is some information from the user where they put the status of the track, like if it's a final mix in this case, and then some comments that they put, things that they're looking for, or things that they might have been dealing with. So for example, on Megatrack's track that I have pulled up here, he's asking, does the vocal sit right in the overall mix, overall tone of the mix? Is it balanced? Thank you. So let's check it out. We're going to start off with this one. And all of my friends up in the chat here, um, make sure if you submitted a, a track, put it in the comments so I can see it and get to it. I'm going to do my best to get to as many as possible today. And if for some reason I miss your track in the scroll, don't be shy. Uh, feel free to just like, you know, reasonably spam me in the chat up above so, uh, so we can make sure that I get to it. I try to get to everybody that's in the live chat as much as I can during the stream and then... Um, if we hit all of those, then we'll hit to some of the other pre-submitted ones. So, all right, let's dig in. Here we go. This is from Megatrax. The song is called Suddenly. Smile 
at me and tears my fears away and made me realize the things I could not see though I really never thought that it could be Awesome. Cool. Great work, man. Um, this is Megatrax. Song is called Suddenly. Awesome job. Cool. Okay. So a couple thoughts going in. Um, one cool song, uh, very smooth and, and quite relaxing. What a way to start the show. <laughs> awesome. Um, so the uh, I really love the mono delay work that you were doing up the center. There's a lot of little details in here that you put into the mix and can tell that you really spent some time with it. So uh, awesome work there. Um, same thing on like the delays that you're doing on the on the chorus at the end and all that stuff. You, you put a lot of thought in uh, how you were going to spread out those effects, which is really cool. So awesome job. Um, overall, I think my biggest thing is compression on the on the track overall. So uh, it's a little bit 
it feels like it's loud to me for the style and um loudness doesn't necessarily mean like the overall luff's value or anything it's more i'm more thinking about the dynamic range of the track and i think that things are so compressed and and kind of limited that it's kind of being squashed down into a pocket and inside of that all kinds of low level detail is being brought up to a point where it feels almost equivalent with the main level of detail that's happening from the instruments so things like room noise or like the the sustain of a note they're all being pulled up by the overall compression or limiting that you have on the track and it's uh, making things feel a little bit flat to me dynamically so as the song kind of goes from beginning to end i don't feel like we ever reach a big crescendo or like a big moment in the song um, because we're just kind of staying at this um, inside of this like little pocket of dynamics uh, throughout the whole thing there's not a lot in the arrangement that really opens up it's not like there's a big drum fill going into a section or, or something like that so um, that's something that's tricky in a mix like this is, you know, how do you actually create dynamics like that and play with the arrangement to to bring something out and make a moment happen uh, with it. The performances are all there and everything sounds really good. I think it's just got a lot of compression going on. Um, the, uh, the other thing with the um, specifically the lead vocal compression, uh, I'm, I'm hearing that, you know, when he goes into like a louder note or a bigger note, the compressor's smacking it down below the quieter moments of the vocal. So that could be on the beginning of a word, he might start off softly and then pick up, you know, pick up the, the volume and the note. And as soon as he does that, the compressor's kind of squishing it down and it's like he started off louder, even though he was singing quieter, the dynamics are sort of reversed that way. Um, it's also kind of bringing up all of the, the the mouth noise and the clicking and all that inside of the vocal. So one way to deal with that, i uh, mentioned lots of times on the show, Isotope's mouth declick is amazing. Even just the default setting, it won't mangle your vocal and it takes care of all the little like tongue noise and the saliva and the mouth clicks and all that kind of stuff that's really fast and kind of a pain to deal with. It'll it'll just clean up the vocal for you. And it's, it's nice because it sort of just gets rid of all of those distractions for you. Um, and then the, uh, the background vocals that are off on the sides pretty far, I hear a lot of low mid bunching up stuff, um, uh, mostly when they're in their lower register, not so much at the end, those felt like they were open and clean, but on the lower register stuff, I'm hearing some of the low mids get pulled up by all that compression. So check out both what's going on in your insert compression on a track by track level. And then also just what's happening on the overall mix. If it's maybe being, you know, kind of pushed down a little bit too much, and I would just kind of play around, you know, like you can always do a save as and keep what you have. And I, I think what you have is nice and smooth and, and awesome just with this compression stuff. Um, do a save as and then play with like loosening up the compressors on things. And if you have to make up some volume, you can always boost up the limiter a little bit, hopefully without, you know, kind of smashing peaks down and all that. But um, I would try to let it breathe a little bit more, bring some more uh, overall dynamic range into the mix and and see if that changes the tune of it for you um if you're hearing something about the overall tone of the mix like you asked is the overall tone of the mix balanced that stuff can really impact the overall tone so if you're wondering about it you're probably hearing something that might be bugging you and i i think that it might be originating from whatever's happening with the compression uh the only other comment i have is just watch out on some of your vocal tuning um Definitely done a great job of keeping things in pitch, but I hear a little bit of the artifacts um, of like perfect tuning coming into play. So remember with vocal tuning, if you just go for perfect, you're watching the graphs and you're making sure it's like all lined up and perfectly in pitch all the time. Um, the human ear, you know, we can we can kind of detect that and uh, you know, the, the BS filter can kind of start to trigger uh, a little bit and you, you start kind of noticing it, even if you don't know the sound of tuning. Um, I do believe that like listeners can inherently kind of pick up on, on something seems a little bit artificial or not natural, like it came from a, a human voice. So specifically around 418, I heard something. And then I think that that last note too, uh, beautiful vibrato, it's right inside of the pitch and everything like that, but it almost feels too um drawn in or, or precise in that way so uh, i hope that that helps and uh great job overall and again like really enjoyed the the detail work that you did in the automation and everything i'm putting my little stamp up there uh saying mark was here and there's the link in case you're not live with us today um, this stream will be available after the broadcast so if anybody is here and you've submitted your song but you got to leave because we go for a long time sometimes on these things uh you know i'll i'll try and remember to comment so that you know i hit your song 
I don't always remember to do that, though. So uh, there's that. I'll try and be good about it today. You guys can yell at me in the chat if I forget. Awesome. Uh, Skirmontis in the chat says, I would say it's good enough for release. Sounds good. Awesome. Smoking Fudo said the big snare was a bit distracting. Uh, Mike Ornsby says, great song. Um, GTM5 official, hi from Las Vegas. I lived in Las Vegas for a little while. I was over in Summerland. Uh, nice to meet you. Jeff says, hi from Hollywood. Hello. Awesome. All right, guys. Uh, let's go on to the next one. F Phantom is from the south of France. That's cool. And I have, I believe that your username is Aku Fen. So we're going to check out your song next. Here we go. Amazing. Awesome job, man. Um, okay, so over in the description for this, he says, Hey, I'm actually mixing three fire punk rock songs. Here's one of them. Actually, the mix is the same for all. I had difficulties to remove resonances from the recording. It was a large hall where we recorded the drums and guitars live. Bass was DI. The singer we recorded after and returned with headphones. Uh, by the way, should I switch the FabFilter Pro Q to linear phase EQ for some mics? Drums, overhead, room mic. Also, I'm wanting, or I'm waiting for the band to do some selection, comping, and alignments, and there's not yet automation. Hope to have some scroll. Hope to have some feedback. Thanks for listening. Awesome, man. Um, so I think that this like nails the style pretty much perfectly. Like I think that you killed it. Um, and uh, one of the things I I kind of want to like talk about a little bit and, and chat room join in here um different genres always have different styles right and the uh you know the first like instinct when you're when you're thinking about nerdy mixing stuff is to um i got my nerd glasses on today uh the uh, first thing to do is like to think about 
oh, could that kick drum have more snap or like is are things present enough and all that stuff. But like if you're a punk rock fan, you don't do any of that, you know, not, you know, not to say you don't do any of that. Like you've done some some mixing here for sure. Um, but it's a totally different style, right? Like like genre appropriate is a big thing. And what I really want to like, you know, say kudos to you on is that I think that you nailed the the heart of the genre and that like yeah i just think you killed it on this and you've had some other stuff up here in different genres um from what i remember aku and i think that like this is just a a testament of a good mixer to really hone in on the sound of the genre the sound of the band and just bring that intention across so uh i can't say enough nice things about that um Okay, so the only, I had like two comments and that's it. I, I thought maybe the guitarist could have a little bit more like low mid heft, like a little more beef to him. Um, and then uh, for that, I would say to check out the Foo Fighters video um, with Daryl Thorpe on Pure Mix and watch the section uh, where he deals with guitars because he does a great job of um, leaving like the low mids and the body of the guitar intact so that it sounds nice and thick. Uh, while also maintaining clarity and, and he's got some tricks in there, uh, primarily like with the Trident EQ and really it's just, you know, kind of boosting 10 K kind of a thing. But, um, check out that video, see if that inspires you to do anything with that. And I think that they could just be a little bit thicker. And if you need to add some air to them, you could. Um, but man, I, I like, again, going back to the genre thing, even that I'm talking about like a very small move here, not like, not something drastic at all. Uh, other than that, the the background vocals, I thought that there was a little bit of a mask or like a low mid build up uh, once in a while on some of the words. And I can't pronounce the word right, but it was um, uh, case, uh, C-A-I-S-S-E, -S -S -E, when they are doing that shout, like chant vocal behind it. When they get to that word, I thought I heard a little bit of a low mid build up, but I didn't necessarily hear it on the other one. So again, I think um, I think you just did a great job on this and you killed it. Going to your question in the description about switching Fab Filter Pro Q to linear phase for some mics. So on that EQ, one, it's it's like my favorite EQ for just dealing with, you know, like you're dealing with resonances. I love that EQ for that stuff. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of character to me, but that's okay. And like, I, you know, you have your other ones in the arsenal for that kind of stuff. But I love to do my cleanup work with the Fab Filter Pro Q. Um, and as far as like the phase goes, at the bottom of a fab filter, you have an option to go between no latency, natural phase, and linear phase. And then there's three levels of linear phase, depending on how crazy you want to get with it. I personally only use the linear phase stuff when I'm doing mastering, and that's on like a on a stereo track. It's very rare that I hear the phase of that EQ enough. Um, I don't use it in low latency mode. I use it in natural phase. And when I'm in natural phase, it's very rare that I would ever hear a phase issue that was um, insulting me inside of the EQ that I would go up to linear phase unless I'm in a mastering situation. And it's um, it's pretty rare. I feel like I need that. That said, uh, my factory default on that EQ is to open up in natural phase mode so i think that the low latency version of that you can start hearing phase distortion inside of that plugin um and it just starts getting a little bit weird but in natural phase i think it's totally fine uh so you eat up a little bit more cpu but i would actually recommend um switching it to natural phase saving that as your user default and having that load anytime you instantiate that plugin uh and then from there just you know if you start hearing something then yeah you could use linear phase uh, and I know like specifically you're asking between mics on the drum set. Um, with that, I, I usually don't have an issue if I'm in natural phase. Like I said, uh, there's a great video. Um, I believe the mixing video from Matt Ross Spang start to finish. He talks about how he just does balances on the faders of individual drum mics. And then he, he does things like EQ on a global level. Um, totally different style of music than this. He was doing some like very old town or uh, old Memphis style feeling stuff on there. So a little bit of a different feel. Um, but he does it for that reason because he doesn't want to hear the individual like, you know, kind of phasing and probably some other awesome Matt Ross Bing stuff, other reasons that he has. But yeah, uh, I hope that that helps. And I think that you did a great job. That's awesome that there's no automation in it yet. I, I think you're already in a good place and automation is just going to bring it to life more. So great job on this. Um, really don't have much else to say. That's a killer mix. Cool. Let me uh, put my little comment here. 
even though I believe you're in the chat. Yeah, you are. Awesome. That's Phantom in the chat. Awesome. All right, let's go on to our next song here. All right, Palisades is back. Let's hit Palisades track. He was at the grocery store, but now he's returned. Okay, here we go. Oh, let's read, uh, read the description. So groovy and informative house track about investing in gold and silver. Nice. All right. 126 BPM. Usually I end up overcomplicating my songs by adding too many layers or having an eccentric arrangement, which can lead to interesting sounds, but a lack of cohesiveness and often clutter as well, where some of these sounds need to be stripped away. For gold, I tried to take a more simple approach with a clearly defined melody dominated by a simple bass line. I'm most conflicted if the bass instrument sounds either inherently... Uh, lacks enough uniqueness or if the baseline melody could use some changes to make it more groovy or interesting. I also feel like the arrangement might become a bit boring toward the end of the song. That being said, I'm excited about this track. I'd just like to make it sound as good as possible, both arrangement-wise and mix and sound design-wise. I appreciate all the feedback and constructive criticism. Thanks. All right, awesome. Chat room, let's give them some feedback. Here we go. Awesome, man. Very cool track. Uh, definitely more simple than than your other stuff, and I love that. I love that uh, you went for like a minimalist approach on it, and also um, just that you're like you're doing that exercise of of exploring like what happens if I you know restrict myself to only a couple things and I don't rely on the wall of sound thing to to make something interesting. But it, 
I really have to make like this the tiny amount of elements that I have inside of the track very interesting uh, on their on their own part, and it's not just relying on something new coming in and pulling attention away from some other sound. So I think that that's an amazing approach. One of the records that I love um, the most for that kind of thing is um, Kanye West. Uh, the Yeezus record, I think, is amazing. It's it's minimalistic, and um, you know sometimes you have to mute what Kanye says, and uh, you know because he's Kanye. But um, the uh, the instrumentation of that record on the whole is just incredible, and um, that's a really good one to to kind of check out for like what happens if I only have eight tracks, you know? Uh, I think I'm getting a call from YouTube. Am I not allowed to say Kanye West's name anymore? Is that a thing? You can't do that on YouTube? Hold on a second, guys. Let me take this. All right, that was YouTube, and they say I can't talk about Kanye West. So back to your song here. Um, okay, awesome. So on here, I thought uh, individually that the production and everything sounds really cool. Now, the... Um, one thing about this is it sounds a little bit like a rough mix or a production mix to me in that like you're still kind of working on the track things are all up in the mix and and you know like they're they're at a good level balance wise and everything but it doesn't feel like a crazy amount of care has gone into the actual mixing stage of the project yet and uh over in your comments you say that this is an early mix so it could very much be that you're just like you're still in production mode and you haven't gone to a mix stage when you do, if you do, um, I think that some things that could possibly improve it will be um, looking at the dynamics of the track overall. So from the beginning, we kind of start in this loud area. We've got like the vocal sample that's kind of up and in my face and like it's it's definitely hovering up there and everything. Uh, and then as the track goes along, I don't really feel again like there's a lot of like crescendo or movement in the track to like pull things away and get quiet so that you can hit somebody hard again. You can't have something super loud without first having something super soft as like a reference point or a point of contrast for it. So I think that that would really kind of help you um, expand the track and, and open it up a little bit as if you just build some more dynamics into the song and let the progression kind of explode toward the end of it and get bigger in the spots where you want it to get bigger and you're already doing that with arrangement. Uh, so... Other than that, like um, I thought like the kick could use a little bit more punch and like top end smack to it. Um, in a mix phase, obviously I would like kind of look to EQ, maybe boosting some of the, the upper smack stuff. Uh, transient designers are amazing for this type of music too. Wave smack is very good and uh, the SPL transient designer both can help to really kind of like deliver some punch without having to go crazy with an EQ. So that's something to check out. Also, just compression, you know, having a slower attack with a fast release, pushing into a little bit will give you a little bit more more smack and punch on it. Things like the DBX 160 or staples, uh, blending that up in parallel on like your kick and your snare, those things can be great. Either way, uh, I just feel like I need a little bit more transient punch out of things. Um, I would also say like in the mix stage, I would play with the space of the elements inside of the track to try and create some more front to back depth with things uh, i think like there's some some areas for you to kind of do that and play with it in like the drum sounds with the snare like possibly making a, a verb that just kind of stretches back into the speakers a little bit and gives us a little bit more of a 3d expanse kind of space uh with the bass synth i thought that the the line was cool and everything i'd like to hear a little bit more top end kind of hair on it like a little bit of saturation just to excite it i'm not talking about like a super fuzz bass just adding some upper harmonics to it um, Sugar from Process Audio, which you get inside of your Pure Mix subscription, is great for that, so you already have it. Uh, I love the Excite mode. You play back and forth between um, Excite and, uh, I believe, Air on there. Uh, if I'm think I might be confusing the bands, but anyway, you play between the two modes and kind of boost things and see if you get a thing out of it. Uh, Spice Rack is amazing for that, too. You can put the EQ before the distortion circuit, filter out the bottom, distort the top a little bit and then use the mix knob to blend the distorted signal back in with the wet in parallel to just add a little bit of uh, hair and excitement to the top of that bass. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, when you do go to the mix stage, and I don't know your production process, but I'm imagining that you're working with a lot of VSTs and sample instruments and stuff. And um, I think that like when you're in the 
production stage of the mix, or even if you're in the mix, but you still have the virtual instruments loaded up, it can be very tempting to go in and like play with the samples some more to try and get some of that stuff to happen. And I, uh, I would say like try as another exercise along with your minimalistic thing, um, which is similar to an artist that I'm not allowed to name, uh, that you, um, I would say like try committing the tracks and not having access to the individual instrument stuff and then just treating it like a mix and um, going through each of those sounds almost like it's the tracking phase and trying to make something cool happen with each one of them and uh, just just adding some new texture and all of that to the to the track. But I think this is super cool and I'm excited to see where it ends up. So if it's uh, if it's around in two weeks and we're back, I'd love to hear it again. So great job. Awesome. OK, so we got some more people in the chat. Uh, Isomatic said, dope track. Um, so, Mike Ornsby, I see you. We're going to get to your song. I see uh, Jose's song. Desilo, I see you. And we're going to nail it. <laughs> Palisade says, that's my biggest problem. I never want to bounce tracks. I totally get it. Yeah, I, I think at some point when you decide that you're just done with that production, be like, that's it. We're off to mix. You know, and then treat yourself like, the mixer palisades not the uh not the producer palisades and all that okay let's see what i got here so we did aku we got mike we got smoking fudo we got jose jose i think that we've done a track from you before but i'm not sure so we're gonna hit you first let's see let me just try searching for sherry there we go jose a here we go from the top no comments on this one, but it is a final mix. Here we go. <laughs>
Awesome, Jose. I love this track. Uh, and I love your approach on the mix. I think that you, uh, again, I'm going to use the word, I think you, you brought a lot of atten- intention to it. It sounds like um, the style of song that I would associate this with, where uh, the vocal is not this upfront, in-your-face thing. It's kind of sitting behind the, the guitars and the music. And there's a great story in there, which makes you kind of like your ears just kind of lean into the mix and, and try to listen to what the words are and all of that, which I love. It's not that I can't hear the vocal. I think it's great. It's just not pushed out in front of the mix, which is very cool. And I'm sure it was a conscious choice. The uh, My comments are basically Tom's comments on here, which happens quite a bit because Tom's awesome. But uh, I would say the... Um, Overall, the compression, it does feel like it's it's pretty loud and compressed. Um, and like Tom says, I don't think it needs to be up there uh, that, that loud. I think that you could have a little bit more dynamic range. It's going to improve the depth of the mix and, and let it go a little bit deeper. Uh, you have a lot going on in the soundscape. There's a lot of depth to it. It's just all kind of being brought up and pushed together by, by all the compression on top. So I agree with Tom on that. Um, the... Uh, Let's see. Yeah, I agreed with his comment about um, maybe a little bit more warmth on the lead. Just a little, though, like a very, very small amount. It's like I see where Tom's coming at with the, with that comment, but I don't think it needs much either. Um, it'll Yeah, it'll balance out the cool saturation thing you have happening in the mid-range, he says. Totally agree. That'll be awesome. Um, but just, just a touch because it sounds really good. Uh, and then the acoustic guitars are the biggest problem in the mix to me. Um, like Tom says, you could probably cut some gunk in the 300 hertz area. I totally agree with that. I would even say look at 160, maybe a little bit too. You don't want to cut so much that they go thin because some of that cloudy warmness is what is giving it that effect of like wrapping around the vocals like a blanket and keeping the vocal kind of back here. And you're in this like trance state from all the music that's happening. So if you go too far, uh, the guitars are going to feel like they you know, come back in the mix and the vocal comes forward and starts leaning out. So uh, play with it. See if you can just look for the resonances. Um, there is a video. I was doing some uh, some cataloging on some old Pure Mix content last night, and I came across the video of George Massenberg, that George Massenberg that came up with the parametric EQ that I'm going to suggest you use, um, recording Will Knox. Uh, it was a singer-songwriter video, and it's George miking up the guitar and just kind of going over what he hears and why he changes mics and what, how he applies his EQ moves and all that. But he does a move uh, in that video that I think would actually fit this very well, where he went and he found the boomy resonance with the parametric EQ that he invented um, and like invented parametric EQs. Uh, he goes through and finds the resonance, dips it out, and then when the guitar is getting a little bit thin, he just takes a low shelf and he kind of brings back up the warmth until it feels nice and balanced. And I would actually recommend that you go watch that video before you even touch this mix because I think that his approach in that is going to serve you well and it'll, it'll probably like be an inspiration and get you in a good headspace for it. Um, really fun. Phantom asks, is that Tom from Pure Mix? It is Tom from Pure Mix. Tom Vullery is a Pure Mix plant in Mixed Ink. Uh, who uh, tries to comment on everything that he possibly can, and he's amazing. Tom is Fab's assistant as well at Flux Studios in New York, and he's a beast of an engineer, and he's great. I love Tom. All right. Uh, I think that's all I had. Oh, uh, last thing I had was the sitar. Um, I would play around with a low-pass filter on that, not cutting it down so you lose all of the cool, airy stuff that's happening, But there's some really high-frequency stuff in there, a lot of high-frequency content, and um, it might be cool to round that off a little bit to make it feel in the same family as the warmth of the other tracks that you have going on. I would just play with it a little, um, you know, low-pass filter, cutting the highs, just bringing it down until things sound too muddy, and then coming back up, and then uh, listening to it a little bit, bypassing it, turning it back on, see if it's too muddy, maybe you bring it back up a little bit more. But yeah, just play around with that and see if... You can you can get some of that stuff out of there. I found that when you cut the high frequencies on on certain stuff that's getting a little out of hand like that, you'll be amazed at how it refocuses the image around um, the core elements of the mix, which is really cool. It's a good fun thing. Okay, all right, guys, uh, let's move on here. Let me put my little comment down there for you. I'd love to hear another version of this too. This is a great great song. Uh, Adrian six of one Adrian. Um, a pure mix uh, 
family member uh, who's been in some videos on, on Pure Mix and everything. Adrian had this great idea of making a playlist of all of the mix-up songs and um, or mixed tank songs. And I think that'd be a phenomenal idea because uh, there's so much talent on here. And like somebody pointed out in the chat already, there's so many different genres and everything that it's just, uh, it's insane how much great music that we find on here. So kudos to all of you guys for, for writing all this amazing stuff that I get to listen to. Awesome. Okay. Uh, let's go over to Mike Ornsby. Speaking of people that blow me away every week. All right, this track is called Sid Barrett's War of the Worlds. Uh, he says, this is a track of an original guitar instrumental played by a good friend, Clayton Yates, mixed in the box, produced by another good friend, Derek Downham. It's called Sid Barrett's War of the Worlds. Sid was a co-founder of P uh, Pink Floyd. Roger Key, Sid Barrett, was an English songwriter. Here's his Wikipedia. Super influential. Awesome. Let's check it out. Here we go. Mike, you never disappoint. That's awesome. Uh, one of the things that I love about uh, you being on Mixed Tank uh, anytime that I like, get to do this is uh, all of the tracks are so distinct and individual to each other. They all have a different sound, and you, you're capable of these like massive, huge, expansive, orchestral-sounding things that sound like they're in Atmos already and everything. And then you can do something like this where it feels like a period piece Something recorded from the 70s, like you're saying, uh, you know, an homage to Pink Floyd and Sid Barrett. Um, and I, I love how you like just nail these different genres and, and different styles of mixing and everything. So kudos to you. This is really, really great. Um, 
the uh, end of your description there, you say um, Sid Barrett died of pancreatic cancer in 06, so this piece is an homage to Sid. Uh, it's a psychedelic surf piece, I guess, if one had to put a handle on it, and one really shouldn't, in my opinion, says <laughs> says Mike. Let me know what you think. Uh, awesome. Man. Okay, so this is kind of like the punk track that we did from um, Akufen uh, or Phantom in the chat, um, where I think that like this is a genre-appropriate sound for what you have going on here and again i think you nailed it the uh i have a couple little comments here um the kick is the big one to me so the kick is happening over on the right of uh of the image and it feels a bit loud compared to the other drum mic so even if you wanted to do something kind of fun and crazy and throw the kick in the right speaker um it feels like it's got either like a low mid resonance to it or it's just too loud uh, over there, and it's just kind of feeling disconnected from the rest of the track in a, in a way that I, like, I don't think is serving the artistic nature of the song or anything like that in a creative way. It uh, just feels a little bit disconnected. The other thing was I hear phase issues between the drum mic on the right and the one on the left. And I don't know how the drums are mic'd, but there, there seems to be a little bit of a phase issue going on between the two of them. Auto Align from Sound Radix is uh, my new best friend, and I guess new being like the last five years best friend, but um, that thing is really, really great at lining two, you know, two microphones on the same source, lining up the phase relationship on the two of them. It doesn't always work because sometimes phase relationship stuff is what makes the drum recording special because you have 13 microphones and we're used to kind of hearing that sound. So uh, it's not always the answer, but I think it could probably help with that kind of um underwater feeling that i'm having from two mics panned out hard left and right being out of phase would do uh so that'd be something to check out and then uh the uh i love the keys that's all i gotta say about that and i love the guitar tone as well um the only thing i'd say about it is just like the the upper presence on it if you think about if you're looking at your two speakers right and you've got a plane in between them um sometimes like to try and figure out the balance of an instrument i'll ask like does that instrument you know well we're going to turn the plane toward you guys like this right does that instrument kind of poke forward and start doing one of these like slope sort of things uh where like if it's a lot of high end let me try and make that a little bit more straight if it's a lot of high end sometimes the instrument can kind of start to do this right and it starts like poking out in the image so again, I'm like looking at my speakers like this, and then we're going to turn that whole plane and look at it. And I just kind of imagine things start poking out forward like that. And that guitar is kind of doing that to me. It's kind of coming out here like this. And this is a bat. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, I would just, just check out and see like there might be a little too much brightness on it that's just causing it to lean forward just a little bit. Uh, the shaker is out in the front of the mix, in front of the guitar, but when I think about songs like this, for some reason I'm thinking Austin Powers, but um, when I think about like songs in the genre, not that Austin Powers is really in the genre, but uh, I, I like hear a loud shaker in my head. So I'm like hesitant to say that it's too loud or anything. It's in front of the guitar, but it kind of feels like it's period and accurate, um, accurate to the genre, period appropriate, accurate to the genre. Uh, I also love the piano sound. I thought you did killer on that. And as far as creative padding goes, at the end when the brass come in, they're sitting in the center with the, uh, with the guitar with some verb around them and all that kind of stuff. But what would happen if you move those over to the left, if you wanted to kind of go for that like Pink Floyd, Beatles, like random mono sources are in the right and left speaker that normally you would expect up the center, but they got a pan knob, you know, last month and they're playing with it and all that. So the brass might be fun to pan off. That was just a creative thought I had. Awesome. Uh, Phil Grip says, cool spy vibe. Jeff says, more cowbell. Uh, Smokin' says, seems like a Fender Jaguar tone. Mike, let us know. What, what was the guitar for that? Uh, David says, hey, you finally made it. Awesome. Cool, man. David, let me know if you got a track in there. I try to hit the ones on the live chat first before moving to the pre-submitted. And anybody else, too, if we haven't hit your track yet, and you uh, make sure you put it in there. The solo, I saw your track, and if I told you i saw it then hopefully we're good and yeah guys just by the end of the thing let me know if i haven't hit you yet we're going to try and get to all these if we can so all right next one i'm going to hit is from DeSolo. solo mike thanks again for submitting that was 
super awesome as always and i hope it was useful and i hope to hear it too i hope to hear another version of it this is dime como i'm butchering that pronunciation i'm sure uh so advanced mix and he says not really sure why the wedding stuff is still happening but i messed around with the vocals and trying to create a little more room here we go this is version four of this mix here we go No hay atrás Me dicen que cambie Pero vivo en la verdad Dime cómo Amo cuando todo es malo Dime cómo Perdono sincero Dime cómo Estoy en paz en la malidad Dime cómo Dime cómo vivo en Como el mar, pensamientos que no están. Respiro y no puedo. Ya no tengo más que dar. Y dime cómo amo cuando todo es malo. Dime cómo perdono no sincero. Dime cómo estoy en paz en la malidad. Dime cómo, dime cómo vivo en esta edad. Tanto amor a vanidad, no valor en realidad El dolor nos gana más, espero un día que cambie la vida Porque siento que ya yo no puedo vivir así Vivir así Estoy corriendo pero nunca voy Destino solo hay amor, buscando una cima, brillando esta vida. Gracias por el honor y por todo el dolor. Paso a paso ya yo voy adelante. That is a freaking killer arrangement. I love the uh, love the style and I love the the genre melding that you're kind of doing inside of this thing. It's you know it's uh, doesn't feel like a folk song um, in the vocal delivery, but the instrumentation is doing that, and you've got a bunch of other elements in there, kind of blending genres. I think yeah, the arrangement's killer. The production's killer. This is super cool. Um, is that the solo? Is that you singing? Is this your track? Uh, it's super super cool. Awesome. Okay, so let's chat about balance stuff. So, uh, Phantom Sonic Science Lab is not from Pure Mix, but he's an amazing contributor on Mix Tank. I think he comments on everything. He's awesome. Um, okay, so balance. So I have a another question for you, DeSolo. So first, I want to know if you did the track because it's awesome and uh, you sound great. If that's you, and uh, my next question is, do you mix loud? So the reason I ask this is I feel like the balance is kind of all over the map when I'm listening kind of quietly. And I would say I'm around like 64, 65, something like that um, while I'm listening to this. So I'm at a fairly quiet level uh, overall. As soon as um, I kind of heard all these balance issues and I started thinking like what what would kind of cause that? Um, uh, DeSillo, you said, yeah, is that, yeah, it's your track or yeah, you mix loud or both? Uh, so I started thinking like, okay, this is, this is probably a case where like he had it cranked up. So, um, I went, you know, I turned my speakers up 80, 85 and just to listen. And then like suddenly the track felt more balanced. So, uh, I'm wondering if you're mixing loud because when you do that, 
everything kind of gets this, um, it's not compression, but like the room gets excited and you start getting all this other reflection stuff involved. And um, basically like the way that something sounds, the relationship of two elements, the way that they sound at a loud volume, when you turn down the monitors and you listen, you'll start to hear things like kind of pull apart from each other and uh, the balances will start becoming more drastic than they were when you had the speakers kind of cranked up. Uh, it's way more fun to listen when they're cranked up, but um, it's hard to do good balancing. So a lot of times, I mean, like so many people, like when I'm starting out a mix, I will be, you know, cranking it up and having fun because I'm trying to feel the song and I want the power and the emotion to kind of guide me as I'm making creative choices. It also helps with like dialing in the low end for me if my, you know, speakers are kind of pushing a lot of air and I'm feeling the bottom of things. And especially if I'm like trying to tailor the the sub range and like, you know, dial in a kick or something like that in the bass. Um, but then when I get to the balance stage, I usually turn it down pretty low to about like 60, 65. And then I'm just listening for the subtle differences in where I move the fader, you know, and sometimes it can take a lot more room on the fader, a lot more length to like get it into the right spot. But then when I turn it up, uh, it still feels like it's glued together and it doesn't fall apart when I bring the volume down. So just kind of reducing the, um, reducing the volume, uh, Okay, so you're mixing on headphones, which uh, headphones are also a tricky, tricky beast um, to uh, to mix on because in in a headphone situation, when you're listening to two speakers in a like well placed speakers in a room, uh, you have what's called the phantom center image, and it's uh, everything that is the exact same on the left and the right will cut, you know give you this uh, false image that there's a speaker in between them that's playing everything that's when you get them set up really well right like it just sounds like there's a speaker right in between your your left and your right uh and then everything different is what gives you your panning effect and all that on headphones it's really hard to perceive the phantom center uh because you don't have a depth thing going on as much uh, at least it is for me so placing things like vocals can be trickier but the volume thing still applies there um so yes i would <laughs> fan <laughs> nice aku fan or uh phantom on youtube says the phantom center with an f um the uh yeah i i still think that, like you can you can get the balancing better by turning down the volume a little bit and um listening at a low level and again like the low level work is where a lot of like the detail automation and balancing stuff can happen so i would try that out and i'd actually try before any other comments <clears throat> that i'm going to make i would try all of the, like that just working on the balance of things before doing any of the other eq stuff i'm about to talk about or any of that i think like Balance is going to be your friend here and helping you figure out a lot of stuff. Now, uh, I want to address really quick that you're on version four of the mix. And sometimes at that point, things can start feeling like very frustrating. You can also uh, start getting really tired of the song or getting tired of working on it and feeling uninspired. So if that's happening, uh, take a break from it if you need to. Um, I think that you've got a great thing going here and I don't think it's like a, you need to start over from scratch thing, but if you are kind of feeling like the mixed fatigue of just like, all right, I'm just doing these revision notes, but I'm not really feeling it anymore. Um, sometimes it's good to get some space from it. So that's just my little interjection there. But after you kind of dealt with the, um, with the balance stuff, the, uh, the next thing that like grabbed me was the vocal poking out of the mix, which again is a balance thing, but it's also a texture and, um, density kind of a thing too uh density not being in eq per se but uh in the effects and the way that you're treating the vocal so i want to recommend a pure mix video for you to watch which is how to listen delays um i think uh that's another one that i stumbled across uh, while doing a project recently and um it's fab explains like very good uses for delays both like 16th note 8th note when you do quarter note throws but things like the Haas effect and using like short delays to help a vocal sit into a track, not for the sake of hearing delay. You're not trying to like hear repeats, 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 but you're just um, doing like these very short slappy delays that almost give the effect of reverb where they just help the vocal to sit into the track. And I think that uh, this vocal could use, use some of that. It's not, again, not to make it sound wet. It's just going to help it sit in. And if you watch that video, um, specifically the beginning part about the Haas effect and everything, I think that that'll help. Um, also, like 16th note and 8th note delays that are they're being felt, not heard, uh, are, are really good at just making a, a vocal sound like they fit inside of the track. So that would be my next thing. Um, 
bass guitar felt quiet somebody asked if it was a fretless bass in the in the chat uh it just felt low to me but it, again that could be another thing where like if you turn down the volume and work on the balances uh the snare felt a little bit muddy cloudy and recessed so um muddy cloudy that's all eq uh but not hearing enough like snap on top of it and it felt like it was behind the rest of the kit kind of a thing so like you had your kick up and the snare felt a little bit back uh again when i turned up the volume things felt better uh, it still felt a little bit muddy but they felt better um and with the the muddy thing you know just searching around for like where's the where's the build up happening if you have something like pro q3 or something where you can solo a band the stock pro tools eq will do this too um and just kind of like move the frequency around in the low mids and just look for something that kind of sounds like woofy and wooly and then bring it down a little bit and make sure you know you don't kind of overcompensate it is very easy to overcompensate and bring things down too far if you've been listening to them in solo because now your ear is just completely dialed in on that sound. So be subtle and then double check your work and all that stuff. I hope that that helps. That was a really, really cool track. Uh, you said that is your track. So man, like great job, great writing, great arranging, great producing, and really good mixing too. I think you're on a solid start there. Uh, congratulations on that track. That's That one would go on the playlist as well. Very cool. I hope to hear another version of it as well. Um, also, you said your level is noob. I would disagree with you. I don't think you're a noob. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Awesome, Palisades. Yeah, um, Palisades said, I learn something new every time here. Really cool vocal tip. Check out that delay video. It's like, that's another one of those, like, change your life videos. Recording vocals, one microphone, fabs, how to listen, delays. Uh, those two videos, um, for vocals... It'll change everything. Everything. All right, next track. Let's see what we get here. Oh, David Stebbins says, I actually do have a mix up there from the Cambridge Stems Library. Um, jazz tune called Saga of Harrison Crabfeather. That sounds awesome. Let me write down that you have a, a mix up there. So David. David, let me know your peer mix username too, if you would. Stebbins Crabfeather should be able to find it with crab feather that'll probably be pretty unique okay uh jose sherry did we get to that already sherry i think we said that yeah yeah we did this guy smoking fudo you're up let's see what we got here fancy that version four that's the name of the song this level is passionate he says, hi, everyone. Thank you very much for the comments on each revision. On this one, I marked as final mix. I tried to remove some of the transients on kick on the snare. There's some, of them, uh, there's some, but I like how they feel. Let's check it out. All right. You, you said final mix. So this is final, 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 V4, final. All caps, final. Here we go. Walking down the street Said there's a woman I love to meet Penny for your thoughts You look like my type She said, hold out your wallet Boy, you'll do just fine Moon's coming up now They're holding hands Stars are coming up now too Looking like a little romance Bought wine and roses Just for the show She said, don't rush me, honey Let's take it slow They walk on to his pad He's got quite the place Says, what about you, babe? Would hold your faith She turns to him With a big side grin I'm no doctor, son But I break it in Now she got One hand around the man One on the gun Is it so long, boy? Oh, we've had some fun 
that you treat me right So romance later Your money tonight What you want you gonna get from you What you want you gonna get from you What you want you gonna get from you What you want is gonna get from you And that ain't the first time She'd ever scammed a man So sorry honey but I just can't live So planned Took all his gold Said thanks for the rose But I like Kareem She hit the Here, just a little bit more in the middle. What you gonna get from you? What you want, she's gonna get from you. And that ain't the first time she'd ever scammed a man. So sorry, honey, but I just can't live so bland. Took all his gold. Okay, awesome. Great job, man. Um, this is super cool. I love the track, and I I love uh, the punch that you have on everything a lot, and it's almost so tasty that there's too much of it because it feels good, so you crank it up, you know? Um, okay, so the I hear the things that I hear are, like, there's a lot of transients, and uh, I hear, like, a low, like, and not really like more of a mid bunching, uh, like a little bit of a loss of clarity, but then on individual elements, I kind of hear that thing I was talking about earlier where, you know, if we imagine the plane that's between our two speakers and then we turn it toward the camera and if we have high frequency content, things start to poke forward and lean toward the listener. Um, I, I hear like a lot of that going on because I hear like uh, that, like the mids of the guitar are balanced, but then like the top end is leaning forward, and even more present uh, on the vocal. So that's really present on the vocal. Like the brightness of the vocal, beautiful and clear sound, but um, EQ wise, but then it's leaning forward just a hair. EQ wise, with the exception that I think that the compression that's on it is also mucking up the lower mids. So I would check out the compression. There might be too much on it and see if we can get some more dynamics of that. And then um, just look at like w the transient manipulation that you're doing on the drums and everything. If it's, uh, I don't know if it's like transient designers or um, if it's coming from compression, but you might need some faster attack times. Uh, I did say that like you like the punch on stuff too. So I wouldn't remove all of that. I think like you're going for a nice punchy sound, um, but check out and see if like those transients are bright maybe uh and see what's see what's going on there um other than that the i love that organ the b3 and thought maybe that could come up but that's all taste uh from there and i think everything sounds really good uh, i was struggling with stuff to to even think of other than other than that i just think you got some like transient work to do and uh just looking at the overall brightness of of those transients really uh Awesome. Uh, Dave Case in the chat. Good to see you, Dave. Um, he says, love it. I'd like to hear the verses come down a little bit. Dave, when are we going to hang again? I want to see you at another Peer Mix event or something. I guess we have to have a Peer Mix event so I can see Dave Case. Uh, okay. Uh, he says, I'm seeing the comment on this track and I'm wondering what does transient exposure mean? How can it be a problem? Um, so I think it's what I just said, where like transients can just kind of poke out, especially if they're a little bit brighter than the rest of the track and, and kind of pop out of the speakers out of the track a little bit. 
they feel great for for punch and stuff and that's the kind of stuff where it's like it's really tasty so you just want to keep turning the knob up sometimes too much is too much uh not that this is crazy too much just a little bit of a thing smoking i hope that helps um there wasn't really a lot to say on this so there you go uh yeah let's see oh uh back to the vocal thing um a gentle low pass filter can sometimes help the vocal sit in the track better like that too so what i was mentioning before with the low pass filter you could try it on the vocal and see what happens um maybe too much i'm definitely buying dave Let's go. Okay. Uh, you're welcome, Smokin'. That's awesome. Hope it was hope it was all good. Uh, let's see. So next one is gonna be from Rune Almaz. Oh, awesome Rune. Sweet. I remember your track from last time. This is great. This is a, a song from his band Felgrip. Almost done, I think, but I need some final tweaking and tips on making the middle section and solo section powerful. I still have a nice feel for the rest of the song. It's always hard to be the musician and the producer. Totally true. Or be the musician and the mixer, or the producer and the mixer, or be the musician. So here we go.
Great job. I think that that's, that's it. It goes on for another 30 seconds, but I think we're done. Awesome. Great job on this. Very cool production. Um, yeah, lots of really cool stuff going on here. And I, uh, I see what you're saying in the comment you wrote. Um, looking, f I need some final tweaking and tips, um, making the middle section and solo section powerful and still have a nice feel for the rest of the song. I see why you write that because um, the solo section through the ending, uh, the middle section, solo section out, uh, all feels really, really, really good to me. Um, and I think that there's a couple things that happen in the beginning that we'll talk about now that, that might help out, um, to kind of keep the same energy going through the whole thing. But it, especially the, the crash on the middle section there, like just felt like, you know, got really huge and really interesting very, very quickly. It was awesome. The rest of the, the song is great and everything. And, and what you have going on here is real, really good, but things got really cool when you got to that part. So I see why you're writing that. Um, Let's talk about the beginning of the song. So I feel uh, once the bass guitar and the drums and everybody is in, uh, the bass guitar is taking up a lot of space on this one. Uh, I think that the volume could come down probably substantially. Uh, and EQ-wise, you might be able to clean up a lot in like the 80 to 160 range. There's some stuff going on in the kick drum. Like it's, it's fighting with the kick drum and eating it sometimes. Uh, playing around with some high pass filters on the kick and the bass might get you some more clarity in the bottom. You don't want to get rid of obviously all the power that's down there, but you need to clear it up so we get some clarity and punch and definition between the two. Uh, things felt better when you got to the midsection. It was almost like the bass guitar came down a little bit if you automated it down at that point. So um, I think, yeah, just generally the bass guitar is taking up a lot of range in the beginning. I think that's causing some of the other um, things that I'm hearing, which are the uh, just a quick one is that the toms have a very sharp or very, very high, very trebly bright, sharp transient to them that are causing them to kind of jump way out of the speakers like they're shooting past my head because um, they're just hearing all the the attack of the tom, but none, none of the real tone to it. And I think that... Um, Things like this can happen because of having the bass too loud. So my next uh, big comment was the uh, the vocal feels over compressed, like it's missing a, a sense of depth um, and a sense of body. You're going all for clarity there, and I think that that's probably because the same thing where like I'm saying like the low mids of the bass and the bass volume are so powerful that they're just taking up all this room. So if you had a more full range full frequency range, full bandwidth um, lead vocal, I think you might be uh, being lied to and feeling like it's it's a muddy vocal. So you're cutting some of that stuff out so that you feel like the vocal is cutting through the mix more. And ultimately, I think it's just because that bass guitar is taking up so much room that it's causing you uh, where instead of dealing with the bass guitar who might be the source of the problem, you're trying to carve everybody else up to make them fit on top of the bass guitar on there. So that's just my like intuition or whatever. It could be completely wrong. Uh, Phantom says at first when the vocal started, I had to focus to hear it, but then I got used to it. Um, yeah. So I'd say like, check out that bass level and see, see what happens there. The drums feel a little over compressed to me. Um, the length of the kick is changing, like the groove of the the drum kit is changing a little bit. I could hear the kick more after we got to the midsection and where I perceived the bass to come down there. Uh, and then uh, my only other comment that I had on here was at 350, I felt like I was missing the downbeat. Um, it was going into a really big measure and there is a cymbal in there, but it's really far back, which made me feel like the cymbals need to come up overall so that we hear the the energy and the intensity of those those downbeats and those big hits uh the big moments that the drummer's putting in there i feel like they're kind of getting eaten up by the guitars and some of the other stuff um i totally get not wanting to put cymbals on top of the mix but i think bringing them forward a little bit uh and i think it's just a balancing i wouldn't go like cranking top end on them unless you feel that they're muddy too but um i think just bringing them up and adding a little bit of energy to all those those big moments that he's trying to create with the cymbals will, will do a lot so cool uh great playing as always uh to like uh you know heard your last track and loved it and uh this one as well thank you for submitting hope that that's useful uh same thing if uh if you do another mix version i'd love to hear it okay dave stebbins crab feather there's more to the name of that song but i'm just gonna say crab feather because it's easy saga or saga of harrison crab feather 
Version 4. Everybody's on version 4 today. All right. Persistence. All right, this is a jazz tune. This is advanced mix. I'm liking this version comparatively. I widened up the piano a bit. Worked uh, worked on the bass and kick. And it's sounding a bit more balanced now. I tried a few subtle things on the intro to give that part of the synth more loop. I don't think I've heard this one yet because I would have remembered that name. But uh, let's see what we got. Here we go. You have a great voice, too, Felgrip. That was cool. Great song. That was super cool. Uh, that's from David Stebbins. Saga of Harrison Crabfeather, version 4. Awesome. Okay, so let's go from the top here. So the first thing that I heard was um, for you to check the phase on the, the drum mics. Um, it sounds like something's a little bit out uh, in there. The ride cymbal, so they're mono drums, it sounds like. Um, the ride cymbal seems like it has some bleed from the snare mic or from something like that that's giving it like a weird uh, high mid presence thing. Um, so I would just check the phase on those microphones. You know, obviously just flipping phase, you know, 180 degrees first. And then if that's not getting you to a better place, um, check out again Auto Align from Sound Radix. It's very, very cool. Uh, and it'll allow you to kind of 
tweak it out between the multiple mics. Um, the Tom at one minute and 27 seconds seemed like it was a bit long and it had a really long decay. It just kind of lasted on for a, re a really long time. So I'd maybe play with automation on that. Like you might want the Tom hit to be that loud, but then maybe you fade back uh, on the fader and when it's kind of resonating out and all that. Uh, it just demands attention when it's up that loud and lasts for that long. And there was some other interesting stuff that was happening in the guitars and everything right there. Uh, the uh, lead guitar and the strings all seem to kind of be happening in the center of the mix. Uh, and the piano is kind of stereo and really wide. I would kind of play around with that placement and um, deciding what you want to do there. If it's a stereo piano track, remember, you don't always have to keep it in stereo. You can take those two pan knobs and bring them in. You know, you can start moving in uh, equally if you link your left and right panners and inverse. Um, as you turn one, the other one will come back in there in Pro Tools and in other DAWs. Uh, I like to play with um, set amounts around my pan knobs, too. I've talked about that on here, but basically I go from like 12, 25, 50, 75 to 100. And I usually try like starting things out on one of those points and that idea comes from Dave Pensato. He thinks about his stereo image uh, the same way that a photographer thinks about the rule of thirds. So I haven't had more than three lines that I like, but uh, try like just kind of sneaking in the piano and that'll open up all kinds of space for you to do other things. Uh, I love what you have going on with the guitar, the delay that's happening on the right. Um, I heard some other stuff that was really cool and really, really neat and intentionally placed and all that. I think you'll make some more room for that if you bring in the piano a little bit, but that's all taste too. Uh, but yeah, maybe getting some things out of the center and, and playing around with the canvas a little bit more would be kind of cool. Awesome. Uh, the hi-hat did feel like it was pretty bright, uh, and pretty hot. So I don't know what kind of control you have over those drum mics, especially if you're a mono. So let's see. All right. Uh, that was Jeff that made that comment. I think it's a good comment. Good job, Jeff. Awesome. Cool. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So, guys, if I haven't gotten to you yet, please put your thing. I'm going to do uh, Smurt Testiller Painkiller next here. If I haven't gotten to you, put it in the comments, in the chat. Or, wait, I'm sorry. We did Smurt Testiller already. It's Painkiller. Oh, that's what that means. Okay, gotcha. That's what you were saying. Got it. All right, let me know if I've missed your track. Anybody in the chat? Let's see what else I got on my notes here. I think I've done all the ones in my notes. Did we do this one already? Does mods. Here we go. Yeah, I don't think I've done this one yet. So this is Americ Desmots. Uh, here we go from the top. He says, hello, awesome Pure Mix members. This is a track I'm working on for a local band, and my mix seems to be advanced in my point of view. I'm quite happy with the result, but uh, I went too, did I go too far on saturation, especially on the vocals and drum enhancement, especially on the snare? Let me know if other details pop up. Love you all. Kisses from south of France. Thanks. Awesome. Okay, track status is master. Here we go.
a hell of a note. Awesome track that is from Desmots in the chat up there. Uh, Amerik, that's from Amerik. So, um, Phantom asked what was on the vocal, and he said that that is JST Benson vocals and automated decapitator. Uh, Felgrip says he could use more rhythm guitars. Palisades love the distortion on the bass. Lead guitar is killer. Nice guitar playing. Great lead guitar indeed from Martin. Everybody likes this solo. High five, everybody up there. Awesome. Uh, cool. Uh, Danilo says, amazing performance and sounds. I missed the drums a little bit. Man, the chat's lighting up on this one. You guys are in. It's awesome. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's check this out. So uh, my biggest thing, vocals feel over-compressed and over ds to me. Uh, the lead vocal um, sounds up the spell check screwed me on this one up the email up your email uh lead vocal up the email sounds good though and oh right okay so um yeah so overall it's kind of compressed and over ds it gets a little boxy to me because of the compression uh the dsing is taking off the the detail of the vocal um this could be another check it at low volume thing 
uh, and you probably don't need as much processing or compression on it anyway. I don't think I'm hearing the decapitator doing the compression, even though that can obviously happen. Uh, I think it's it's something else in there. So it might be that Howard Benson thing that you were talking about. Um, the uh, it feel it, yeah, it felt to me like the vocals were possibly the last part of the mix. Like they had to fit on top of this amazing huge instrumental uh mix in there and there wasn't like a lot of room left for him which can cause the desire to over compress things make them a little bright all of that and then if they're feeling too bright you start de-essing stuff because there's not enough room for the thing to pocket into the mix uh i heard for example things like mouth clicks and all that again isotope rx mouth declick amazing cleans up all the all the stuff uh, but I did hear an edit at 124 because of the compressor releasing. Uh, so there's a part where the band kind of cuts out and you hear the vocals edit uh, right before the downbeat happens and the band comes back in. The snare drum might have been a little too loud for me. I felt like the uh, the very bottom of the mix, the sub range, was a little bit too boomy and heffy and subby. I would play around with maybe doing a high pass on the entire mix. Um, you don't, again, like you're not trying to like kill all the heft in the bottom of it. Just cut off some of the extra uh, extra weight in there, and I think that you'll find that things are actually more punchy when you do that. Uh, 3.30, I love, love, love the scene change that happened where you went over to the room mics. That's super cool. Uh, but what I was kind of hearing is the intention of the arrangement in the band was like they wanted to have this big chanting like army of monks singing these background vocals, and they felt a little bit thin and quiet to me, um, a little underwhelming compared to the part. And also the decision to like cut back from all like the sample sounds and, and go to the room mics and all of that. Um, yeah, and then otherwise it, it felt like sometimes things are a little bit muddy and one dimensional. So play with EQ, like the guitar EQs and all of that. Uh, the guitar solo at the end is amazing. It might be a hair loud, but that's also rock and roll. So, you know, uh, I would again check it at low volume. Uh, if you can on this one, because this is meant to be listened to loud. Nobody's going to listen to this song at low volume. Who cares what it sounds like at low volume? I'm talking against myself. Uh, I'm sure like when it's cranked up, that felt really good. Uh, it is like sticking out way in front of the mix. And sometimes that's the way to do it. And you just got to do more guitar, more guitar, more guitar. Uh, I think it's amazing that you made some, some really informed just like choices on this. And there's a lot of intention in the mix and great job. Also a lot of really great comments up in the, up in the chat here. All right, guys. Uh, I think I hit the end of the list that I had on here. Hello. I feel like somebody just posted one. Oh, here we go. Eternal Wolf Music. I love Eternal Wolves. Uh, hey, Mark, I just submitted a chat called Indiana Rest and Bone from the download section. Sweet. Let's check it out. So, Indiana. There it is. Version 3, Eternal Wolf Music. HD. All right, here we go. Let's check this out. I'm sitting on this night bus in the rain. A thousand street lights through the window, another town without a name. The one thing I keep thinking of is you. Your made up face like Marilyn, most prettiest girl I ever seen. You hand me like a cigarette as you wandered in the room. Stick on the mirror of me your name It's not the steps you take that lead you away It's the distance that's between them We cross that river for the shore As you're laying down upon your side Silhouetted by the morning light To write with the hand words Words to fit to say Is to give your heart up to The well-worn page You never had an answer to the right. 
just a picture frame The postcard of your naked skin And when I saw you Awesome, man. So, Eternal Wolf Music. So, you wrote, um, I'm trying to improve my mixing abilities in genres other than my wheelhouse metal. Great freaking idea, <laughs> right? Like, that's that's one of the best things that anybody can do because guess what? It's going to help you in your wheelhouse of metal, uh, for sure. You're always going to learn stuff from other genres. And, and people who do singer-songwriter stuff like this, do a metal track. You know, like, there's so much to learn from other genres and... Um, not to mention, like, if you do it professionally, uh, you know, it, it just makes you a more rounded person. You can say yes to more gigs, which is good, uh, and be a good fit for those gigs, not just say yes. Um, so, yeah, amazing job on this. Uh, your general focus this early in the mix. So um, you say early in the mix in, in here, but you put advanced mix for the status. So I'm not sure exactly where it is, but uh, your uh, focus right now is balance and stereo placement. So let's talk about that for a second. So um, I feel like everything still feels a little up the middle. Let me check one more section here. Stand by. You never had an answer to the road laid out. Okay, so right now I feel like I've got B3 acoustic guitar and lead vocal right up the center of the track. And uh, one thing I like to do is take like the acoustic guitar and a singer songwriter thing just slightly move it off to the side make a little bit more space up the center the center is sacred ground right there right like there's center that it's power it's punch it's the low end it's uh it's all the important stuff it's like if you put something in the center you're telling the listener hey this is the thing right like in most cases i mean you could also make the same argument for if you pan something hard right i guess but or left. But um, anyway, I feel like the center is sacred ground. And uh, especially for making room for a vocal, you want to kind of like keep some space there for the vocal to pocket in. And I would play around with just like moving the guitar a little bit left or a little bit right. Uh, a lot of times, you know, it's different for every song. So there's no like hard, fast rule or preset for this. But um, I'll try 12, you know, for example, like that seems to be a good, decent amount to start at to start moving things out of the way of the vocal a little bit. Uh, I like to go left. It doesn't matter where you go with it, you know, left or right. But um, try try that a little bit. Same thing with the B3. It's feeling like it's very much in the center. That one I don't mind as much because B3 is like a harmonic bed, you know, and it can sit behind the vocal and just be like a pad thing. But it does feel very mono right now. So um, speaking of the stereo placement and the spatiality of the mix, I would consider maybe trying like a room reverb for this. Uh, something like Sunset Sound um the ik multimedia thing that it's like you know artificial rooms ocean way rooms ocean way studios is my favorite one uh but i feel like i recommend that every time so um i would 
I would check out doing, oh, who's that goofball? Um, I would try uh, doing like Ocean Way or uh, the T-Rex one. There's also the Fame one, but I think that that's a little bit more mono. But try to put some space around it. You don't even need one of those plugins. You could just do like watch the Haas effect thing or how to listen to reverb and, and play with your stock reverb. Just do like a room sound that gives it a space to live in and just kind of spreads it out of the center just a little bit. Um, let's see, hope that's useful there. I also felt like the B3 could come up a little bit and have a little bit more body to it, a little bit low, low mid, more low mid, more harmonic information down there if you can do it without it getting too muddy. Um, the vocal feels a little over compressed to me. As a result, it feels boxy. Uh, I also hear a lot of mouth noise. The uh, breaths are sometimes pretty loud, which is all probably from over compression. Uh, again, isotope mouth declick, amazing for cleaning that stuff up. But before you go and like get a plug in or put a plug in on it, um, try bringing the compression down and just see if that solves the problems because you might not even hear that stuff as bad uh, once you once you bring that compression down. Could use some more punch from the kick. Um, you mentioned that you're doing parallel compression on the drums and the music, I think. We're going to talk about that in a second, but one suggestion for parallel compression with a kick would be a DBX160 or anything where you got a slow attack, fast release, and you're just trying to get the transient to pop through a little bit more and then blend that up in parallel. If, um, if you want the uh, band to be kind of like recessed in the mix as it is too, this is a separate comment. If you want them to be a little bit recessed like that, Try playing around with EQ um, to help achieve some of that. Uh, it sounds to me like you want everybody to kind of be living back behind the guitar and the vocal and you're focusing on the guitar and vocal, which is a great approach and a thoughtful approach and kudos. Um, but you could also do some more things like if you think about what happens when a sound source goes away from you. We've talked about this a little bit before, too. Um, you can... Next time somebody's talking to you, uh, and if the conversation's boring, you can just try listening like the tonality of their voice. Listen to the room around, uh, without being rude, obviously, but like, listen to uh, what's going on around you. Like, how's that that voice hitting you? And is there a lot of top end in it when they're they're close to you? Or maybe somebody's talking to you from across the room. Try and, you know, while listening to what they're saying, uh, also listen to the sound of their voice. Listen to the sound of the room and um, put that stuff in the data bank. And then next time that you go into a mix like this where you're like, I want things to feel further away from me, you'll probably remember that the person who was further back in the room had a little bit less top end clarity to them. Um, obviously, there were reflections from the room if it was a live-ish room uh, or not if it was a small tight room, but... Either way, there's going to be less like low end, less detail, a little bit more diffuse sound, all of that kind of stuff. So my suggestion for putting the band in the back would be to try a low pass filter and take out some of the very, the very high top. And I think that that's going to help you push them back a couple more feet or give it a little bit more of a convincing feel that they're back. Because right now it just kind of sounds like the volume's low, but they're still full bandwidth. So see what you could do to kind of play with the depth on that. Um, the lead vocal, I felt could use a little bit of, uh, spatial effects on it. So again, I would recommend the, um, Fab's delay video, the how to listen delay video and, uh, play around with like the 16th, 8th house effect style delays where they're, you know, under 50 milliseconds and all that. Not so you hear delay, but just so you like help that vocal recess and sit in the pocket of the mix a little bit better. Um, so my last thing is on here, you say, I, um, I'm running a bit of parallel compression on the guitars and on the drums to try to liven the track up a bit, but I'm struggling with the guitar. So let's talk about the goal of the parallel compression. So you say to liven the track up a little bit. Is it to get more density out of the track? Is it to get more punch out of the track? Um, because those are two very, very different approaches to parallel compression. And it's not just a matter of like, I'll compress a lot and then push it up in the mix and that'll be parallel compressed and have more excitement and all that kind of stuff. Um, for example, on drums, I have uh, multiple parallel compressors that are available in my template to me, you know, whenever I decide that I need them. But I have to ask myself the question before adding any kind of parallel compression is like, what's the goal of it? Like, what is it that I want to bring out of that? If it's attack and, you know, punch... Uh, I'm reaching for a distressor with a slow attack, fast release, because I just want more transients and I want to blend them up in parallel. 
same thing with the kick drum. If I want to parallel compress the kick drum, am I trying to add length to the kick drum or am I trying to add smack and punch to it? Smack and punch, DBX 160, length, um, anything with a fast attack and a very slow release where I'm just like pushing the front of that kick drum out but then bringing up the, the sustained note of that. Um, how do you like these hand moves? <laughs> Sorry, I'm so ridiculous. Uh, and then, um, you know, overall kick compression, same thing. Do you want more transients and more punch from the entire thing? Same with guitars. More sustain, more harmonics, more punch, all of those things. Um, just trying to think about those and decide it before making the move to reach for a parallel compression chain and, and adding all that extra stuff in and making sure like you're, you're just thinking about what you want to do before you do it and moving with intention. Um, great job, Eternal Wolf Music. I, I love the track. I think that you're on a, a great path there. And I think it's even better that you... Uh, you know, in, in an effort to improve your mixing abilities, you went to another genre other than metal, which is your wheelhouse. I think that that's awesome. And everybody uh, should, should grab a takeaway from that because that's a great thing to do. Um, okay, moving on. Thank you for submitting. Awesome. Uh, let's do Danilo. Or wait, I'm sorry. I keep on teasing D-Pen. D-Pen, let's do your track. And then we'll move on from there. Here we go, D-Pen. This is my time. Here we go.
That track is so good. That is so good. Uh, man, thank you very much for submitting that. I love this thing. This is right up my wheelhouse. I like really into this kind of music. I love love Portishead. Um, obviously, like Radiohead and all that stuff too. But this is this is like a Portishead vibe, right? Um, let me know if if it is a Portishead vibe. If you like Portishead, and that's a, a, an inspiration or anything to you. Um, I really love this. What a singer that was fantastic um Americk has a suggestion he says good vibe i imagine drums having a small delay on the snare especially on the quiet sections yeah absolutely uh like a triplet delay would be so sick on there um cool danilo i see that you uploaded a track that's awesome uh you're very welcome eternal very cool um yeah that was such a good song such a good song uh Danilo says, I felt the delay on the electric guitar was a little overwhelming, but I think it's intentional. Um, yeah, it felt like uh, there's a lot of attention. Cool pan throws on the drums. Yeah, Zuesk says, um, this is super cool, Deep End. Uh, cool. So uh, I have a couple thoughts on it. Um, I want to put the vocal aside for a second and talk about like the the symbols and stuff. Um I'm really thinking like about the, the Portishead. Yeah, so yes, exactly. Trip Hop, Portishead, Massive Attack, all the way. Um, Deep End, I'm going to ask for a music suggestion. Uh, do you have any other amazing uh, Trip Hop stuff I could check out besides Portishead and Massive Attack? Because um, I have a feeling that you know some really good stuff and I would love to hear it. So <laughs> let me know. Uh, okay, so thinking of the top end of the symbols and everything um with like the portishead sound like it's not always super dark necessarily that texture but it does have a texture applied to it and like some of the high stuff the high percussion stuff in the in the symbols um symbols and other other percussive elements there they feel very bright to me and like they're kind of popping forward in an aggressive state instead of like a warm bath like uh the rest of this stuff feels like i don't mean like a bath and reverb just like it's it's just like warm and soothing um texturally to your ear uh so i was thinking like if you try rounding off some of the top on that again it's going to like help it sit back in the speakers a little bit um the thing that i would reach for to do it would be a back cq with a low pass you know low pass cut on on the very top of it and that's only because that eq is very very gentle in the way that it rolls off the top so that's all that really matters. Gentle low pass filter cutting off some of the top and seeing like if that just helps to recess those and put them inside of the image a little bit and like a part of it. Um, so uh, the I'm ignoring the vocal for another second. At 4.30, the piano was out of phase and it distracted me from the vocal. Um, and I think that's all I really had except for going to the vocals. Uh, you know, there's things that like, you know, do you, do you want more punch out of the kick drum and all that stuff? Uh, the bass felt great. Um, there's comments about translation of small speakers. I don't know. This thing's so good. Uh, let's see what Tom says here. Yeah, so he, he, um, Tom did have, it gets a little muddy in the 80 to 90 area. That would be like the thing I was thinking about. But it's also kind of the style. Um, maybe if you wanted more clarity there, you could check that out. And uh, we'll talk about the vocals in a second. Yeah, Tom heard some tuning stuff as well. You could you could try um, playing around with the pitch thing, seeing if you can smooth that out a little bit. Uh, and all right, enough. Let's talk about the vocals. I'm excited to talk about the vocals. Okay, uh, so I would do on this, I, I know it said that you started this track 12 years ago. It shows. It's awesome. Um, I'm going to suggest that you do a save as and wipe everything off the vocal and then pull down everything except for what you hear to be the core of the song. Right? So pull the vocal down too. Just, just like find the center of the song and just think like if I only had three elements or four elements, what would put the song together? Right? Like who would it be? Um, to me, it's the drums, the bass, and the vocal on on this tune. And then everything else needs to wrap around those things and, and fit into whatever the vibe is with those. The vocal, um, it has the things that are like kind of mentioned in these comments here about like, feels over compressed, it feels a little boxy, all of that. Blah, we'll throw all that out for a second. Um, strip everything off the vocal and just place it in the mix with um, 
with those core elements that you decide on and then find some textured effects for it some things that like fit well into the genre and and really before doing anything just like think about think about what you want it to sound like um i feel that with when we run into like over compressed and boxy vocals it's because we're trying to fit them into a mix and we're doing the technical things to do so so like need it to fit in this pocket if the vocal got in there too late it's probably going to get all over compressed to a certain extent and then now i need it to have like some reverb or delay or something because it's not really sitting in the track and like we kind of go into like and technical engineer mode instead of creative mode so all of that you know blabbering to say like um just strip it down to the core think about what you want the vocal to sound like and if you're going for like a portishead thing um if you think about the way that her vocal sounds it's not full range. It's not a pop sound. It's saturated a lot of the time. There's, you know, delays and all kinds of things on it. What are the things that makes that so freaking compelling to listen to? Um, and then think about, not that you're like trying to do a copycat of Portishead, but like think about the things that you like from that or the things that you like from a Radiohead thing or a Tina Turner thing or whatever. And then like start crafting the rest of the song to fit around that vocal um and around the the you know if it's the bass and the drums or whatever like get all of those things dialed in and then now you can bring in all of the dressing the the other very important parts and not that they should be any quieter than they are because i i felt like the rest of the mix all felt great i'm mostly focusing on the vocal but i think that you have to dial the vocal in when there's space to do it get that feeling great and then you can bring everybody else up around it uh, and it, I think it would work a little bit better and you get something um, with a little bit more intention on it. Um, but that's not to say that this doesn't have intention because this feels really, really freaking good and I love it. Um, I would love to hear another mix of this when you get to it. Uh, and I would be inspired too. Like one, remember it would be if you decide to do this, remember it's a save as, you're not losing anything by doing it. Um, so save as, strip everything off the vocal, bring the faders down on everybody except for what you think is the core. Uh, bring the vocal up, make it fit, make it do exactly what's in your head, then bring everybody else into it. Remember, it's a save as. You're not losing the mix that you already have. If you really want to be done with it and this exercise is a complete flop, doesn't matter because you have a save as. So it won't be that bad. Um, and I think that you do it really, really quick too. <laughs> he says, I see. I'll send you a V2 in 12 years. You're killing me. No. Market uh, puremix.net. I would love to hear a V2. Um, and if you have other music online, I'd love to hear about that too. This is really great stuff. Uh, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, and I wouldn't like get obsessive about it either. I'd try like, you know, if you wanted to put like a timer on it so you feel like this isn't going to be a never ending thing, see what you can do in an hour and then like close it and don't listen to it for the rest of the day and open it up the next day and just see where it's at. Then maybe spend one more hour on it or something like that. But I don't think you're that far away from making this like kind of happen and feel awesome. Just think about what you want to do before you do it. And I think it's going to be amazing. Um, very, very cool. Yeah. Danilo says, come on, man. It's great already. It is great already. And you could actually completely stop <laughs> if you wanted to. It's really, really good. Okay. Uh, Isa, uh, D-Pen says, chick, chick spring to my kingdom. Awesome. Try the group Flunk, Spring to My Kingdom. I'm writing it down right now. You guys check it out too. Maybe we'll talk about it next time. Flunk, Spring to My Kingdom. Thank you for that. I'm excited to check it out. Okay, awesome. Deep End, that was a super cool track. That was that was awesome. Thank you for submitting. Very cool. Guys, have I missed anybody? Is there anybody else in the chat who's been yelling at me about a song and I've missed it? Let me know. While I wait to find out, because we're on a little bit of a delay, I'm going to randomly draw a track up here, and we'll do one more. Oh, we already did that one. It was amazing. Let's try another one. Oh, I don't know what that banana one. That looked like a familiar name. Danilo, did we do yours? Hold on, hold on. I think I saw Danilo in there. Danilo. Here we go. All right, I found your track. Here we go. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
sono tranquilo das almas Ouça meu grito sem voz Ofenecer de paixão Guys, it gets better every week. It's crazy. Um, amazing song. How cool is that? Very, very nice. Awesome. Uh, just checking up on the comments here. Martin says, nice harmonic progression. Zuesk says that he loves Brazil. Fandom says, so great. Really nice details on the lead vocal. Um, percussions are sometimes a bit in the way. Beautiful song. Uh, great Groove says, Captain's High. And uh, is the whole drum press being parallel here? Um, Smoking Fudo says, cool song. I'd like to use some auto pan on some percussion. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, and Captain says, my feelings too. Heart. Awesome. Uh, Danilo, this is awesome. Thanks for your patience uh, with me getting to that song. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, let's let's talk about this. So, I, I kind of have... A little bit of the same thing that I said on the last one to, to think about this, and that is to like um, paint a picture of of what you imagine this thing sounding like, right? Like, if you take like I've got like you know some Avid controllers in front of me, some fader things. I got stream decks and buttons and iPads and all kinds of crap in front of me. I got like speakers and there's a monitor controller and a keyboard and mouse and like what if we just took all of this stuff and just threw it away and you were just sitting in front of your speakers what is it that you want to hear what does that thing sound like what is the picture is it a movie is it expansive all of that stuff um and again like thinking about where you want to go with it the beginning of this track like 
I was uh, completely engaged in it. Um, I felt like it was a little over compressed. Um, there's a lot of low detail coming up from the guitars and all of that. And like the vocal uh, gets a little boxy at times and all that. Um, but I was completely glued into what, what was happening. When the percussion comes in, uh, I lost I lost the plot for a minute. And then I came right back to it after I got used to it. And I just enjoyed the music, which is obviously the goal. And I thought it was really, really great. Bottom line is, I think you have an amazing performance here overall in the entire thing. I think it's recorded well. Um, I think there's a little too much processing going on with compression and all that. But more importantly, um, just let's look at like when all the percussion comes in, right? I think that the problem with it for me right now is that everything lives on one plane and it's all loud and it's all in my face at the same time. And I can't... Um, guide my ear where I want to go. If I want to hone in on the vocal and just listen to that, it's a little bit hard because I've got the percussion in, in my face and same kind of thing with the guitars. Um, like what Captain said, it almost sounds like a lot of um, a lot of parallel compression and all that. Um, but I'm going to pause for my comments and just say, damn, that track was awesome. So, all right, now back to the comments. Um, if I was trying to like, trying to get a little bit of separation on all of that stuff, uh, it'd be the same thing where like with the percussion, what if you take off some of the top end, let it be a little bit more recessed in the track, a little bit darker, uh, get a little bit more 3D where like if the vocal's more full bandwidth, it's probably closer to you. The percussion might be back a little bit. Um, you could still get some punch. You'd have a lot more depth this way. Uh, the guitars, same thing. Where do you want them to be front to back? And if you think of things in this like more cinematic, like, a picture what has depth of field on it what's blurry what's close what's clear um all of that i think it would like just paint this amazing picture of of the song and i don't think you're far away from it i think like if you were to roll back some of the compression uh some of the volume on the master um and then play around with some of those things like if it is parallel compression on the drums maybe that comes down a little bit and, and all that uh like captain says you're onto some great things um so yeah, like uh, speaking of the depth of field thing, like if you imagine how in focus this microphone is and, and like my face unfortunately is and then how the synth back here is blurry because it's like out of focus a little bit. That could be, you know, perceived as like something that's not bright and a little bit darker and all that or doesn't have so much detail and then you've got more detail on things that are closer to you and all that. So that's, I think of depth and mixing a lot that way. Um, and I'd like to hear everything just kind of like expand out a little bit, have a little bit more dynamic, not all be so close and, and up front and in my face, if that makes sense. Um, this is beautiful, though. Thank you for submitting it. I thought I might have heard some pitch things, but I I think it's probably fine. There wasn't any like major note that made me think like, oh, right here, we should look at pitch or anything like that. It was just once in a while it felt like it. Um, but I wouldn't even worry about that, honestly. And that it just felt like a beautiful, like natural performance. And that was fantastic. I love it. I'd love to hear where it goes if you do a V3. Um, and same thing, like you can always do a phase at, or a save as. And, uh, you know, look at it like this is only if you're exhausted with the mix. Maybe you're not. But um, I know the feeling of like being exhausted with the mix and being on version 10 and, you know, being like, oh. I don't have anything else to give to this thing. I don't even want to open it back up. But if you shift your perspective from like, it's not doing another version, it's doing another painting of of the song and of this beautiful thing that you've crafted. Like, you're not going to lose anything by doing it. And just, again, like stop, faders down. Just think about what you want to see. And everything that you do should be a brush stroke. And, um, you know, you're like bob ross you're painting little trees and all that but um everything should just be about bringing the vision out in inside of your head not worrying about like how do i fit this just focus on the core elements make those sound great bring everything up around it and and have fun with it um so you say it's actually a combination i tried to hold a little bit of the transients with some fast compression but you nailed it i should eq it awesome um painting with light john elton nice okay uh Cool. I hope that that helps, Danilo. I'd love to hear another version of this. Uh, and everything that we did today, that was it was all great. Um, oh, man. Danilo says, thanks a lot, man. This is actually not the final vocal. The singer is amazing. The singer is amazing. I thought you were the singer. Um, 
Did, what, uh, are you the engineer? Are you also like guitar player? Um, what else have you done on this? Cause wow, it's really good. Um, also like the engineering is great too. So very cool. Uh, not the final vocal, man, that sure sounded like a final vocal. Um, that, that's cool though, because it means that you get to do another version of it. Uh, another, like another, you know, another take on it. Awesome guys. Uh, I think that I've gotten to everything. I'm going to wait for another minute. So anybody can yell at me if I, if I missed you in the chat. Um, it's hard for me to watch the chat and do this sometimes, but so let me know. Um, just mixing. That's awesome. Danilo. Awesome. Yeah, I can, yeah, just like focus on the story and that that vocalist performance and just paint it. Uh, I think it's like I'm I'm this captivated by the mix that you have already, so I know that you're gonna do something else cool. Awesome. Uh, and you did the string and brass arrangements and the samplers. Awesome. Yeah, very cool. I wonder if those string and brass things could come out a little bit on there too, because they were really really good. But yeah, we'll see. Awesome. All right, everybody. Um, Martin says, great stuff today. Yeah. Nice. If you weren't here at the beginning of the show, we have an amazing video coming out uh, from David Bendith on Friday. Uh, he's known for doing Paramore's uh, records, Breaking Benjamin, so many others. I have a trailer for you. I'm going to play it one more time, and this will be the last chance for anybody to yell at me if I miss something. We'll do it when we come back from the trailer. Until then, David Bendith. A beautiful day, all the trees, scenery, the 72 channel SSL loaded with outboard gear. Today, we're going to be mixing a wonderful band of three sisters called The Warning. Go ahead and cry, shall go with the SBX90 and the AMS, I sort of feel is magic. And if you have the right room with the right compression, you can make drums explode. It's not necessarily the best thing to have everything in its right place. It's good to have elbow sticking out, which is what I'm trying to do with a band like this so that you really notice certain things. As if it was 1970, old school Rush, all these great three piece bands, Cream, this band is hanging with them and there's not a lot of manipulation going on. Awesome. Okay, so uh, yeah, David Bendith, Friday. That trailer is killer. Andrew Ruiz on the trailer uh, and the video edit. Nice. Okay, Matt, let me know the name of your track. I have not listened to your track. I don't believe. Let me know the name of it. Um, Six of One, good to see you, Adrian. Adrian, I think it's tonight. Elise Trow, T R O U W is playing in Cleveland, I believe. It was at, it's either tonight or it was last night. If it's tonight, I'm jealous you live in Cleveland because I want to go to that show. And if I wasn't working late, I would drive up and pick you up and we go to the show. But alas, I'm working. Uh, Matt, let me know the name of that song. Cool. And <laughs> let's see, let's see if we can find it here. So I tried searching for Matt's. Uh, I can try and spell your last name. Oh, here we go. I think I found it. Stories behind the scene. That looks close enough. Here we go. So it says, hi, I've come to an end and want to have some input how to come to the next level. Best regards. All right, here we go.
Sorry, everybody. You were just watching me nod my head along to the thing. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's try this. He did a much better mix than no sound, I promise. Okay, listening from the top. Whoops. A man told me about his versatile life. I've missed his past away wife The troubles he had along the way How it made him the man he was today His fading mind was his biggest concern Cause he knew it still had a lot to learn Woman told me about adventures she'd been on From climbing mountains to surfing at dawn She'd been traveling all around Met people from different backgrounds People called her free But how can you be free When no one is there To share the things you see Only if you take the time, listen and care The innermost stories will be shared The true beauty can only be seen In the stories hidden behind the scenes I once met a man who sang a song And I started to sing along he connected through his harmonies Later we shared our personal stories And I found out behind his reserved mind Was an emotional man, strong, caring and kind Only if you take the time, listen and care The innermost stories will be shared be told And they are worth more than precious gold Only if you take the time Listen and care The innermost stories will be shared The true beauty can only be seen in the stories hidden Awesome track. Really, really cool. I uh, love the lyrics. Really good story. It was awesome. Uh, very cool. So you say, I've come to an end and want some input on how to go to the next level. So um, a couple things on this one. Um, the vocal is nice nice and present. Like I can hear what's going on there. The uh, There's some other things going on in the track that um, I'm wondering about your speaker setup uh, and and how you're able to um, kind of hear this, if it was like headphones or uh, if you have monitors, how they're kind of placed or uh, where they're where they're at. Um, because I'm hearing some things that uh, sound like they're fooling you. Uh, for example, the, the kick has a lot of bottom to it and it's very sustained, right? So a lot of bass, very sustained. And then the contrast of the snare, it's very, very recessed and almost sounds like it's in a hundred percent reverb. It's just very recessed and pulled back, but the kick is loud. So if you think about what that would look like on a stage, you'd have like a 
kick drum up at the front of the stage and then a snare drum way back here. Um, that would be like reverberating into a canyon or something like that. And they don't feel like a part of the same instrument or a part of the same um, groove even uh, because one's so um, pushed back, if you will. Uh, that makes me feel like your your speakers are probably lying to you about, about what's going on. Um, whether it be headphones or uh, speakers and all that. Um, Bob Holbrook says the fills are fighting the vocal, um, so that's something to, uh, to check out with it, just making sure that things are all a little bit more connected. The uh, My suggestion with this one would, would kind of be like the other ones, like even if it's just for an exercise, doing a save as on this, bringing the faders down, stripping the processing off, the, uh, the vocal sounded a little bit boxy to me, a um, little tiny bit over compressed and all that. Uh, same with the piano little loud, little boxy. Um, the guitars felt a bit thin to me, um, but I would throw all that out for a minute and like try doing a fresh take on the mix of this song. And it doesn't have to take you 10 hours. Um, just do a save as, strip the processing off. Again, bringing the faders up, just bring the faders up of the core instruments in the mix, the ones that tell the story the most and really define what this song is harmonically and uh, from the story perspective make those great and then bring everything else around it you know so if it's the vocal and the guitars bring the vocals up bring the guitars up make them all work together and then if you need the groove next start bringing in the drum kit but like focus on where's the downbeat where's the backbeat where does that all need to sit in relation to the guitar and the vocal so it doesn't take over you know what the what the vocal's trying to say but um the the idea behind that is one you're thinking in a musical way of like what's important inside of the song um, and you're also ensuring that you have space for it, uh, that, you know, it's not going to be like, how do I, you know, make the drum sound amazing. And then now the acoustics are going to sound amazing in the bass. And then now I've got to fit the vocal on top of this or whatever. And there's not much room left. So I guess I'll over compress it. Like, I, I think that that's where a lot of that comes from, but you know, it's, it's all like a guess and hypotheticals and, uh, just my crazy thought, but, um, I would do a save as and do another mix on it. And like, even if you have to limit yourself, if you're feeling burned out on this mix and you like the thought of starting uh, from not scratch, because you're going to have an idea of it before you even start pushing faders up. Um, but uh, yeah, if, if that seems overwhelming, just, you know, be like, let's see what happens in an hour, you know? And just uh, if you're searching for inspiration, listen to the lyrics of the song, listen to what like the emotion is behind it. Um, Michael Brower like talks about this in the intro on, or in uh, his Brower as video, there's a whole section on like how he looks for inspiration inside of a mix and all that. And I, it, it just nails it. Like, you know, that was a really good one to me. Um, so focus on what's important, listen to the singer, listen to what they're saying and uh, make some music and have some fun with it. Awesome. Guys, what a freaking amazing group of songs and everything today uh it was it was awesome thank you so much for submitting everything um i believe we'll be back here in two weeks for another mixed tank live uh there's a possibility that there might be somebody taking over the slot um who might have worked on the Foo fighters record recently uh so there's a possibility we'll be we'll be swapping out the mixed tank in two weeks for q a We'll let you guys know by email. If not, I'll be back here at 2.30 p.m. Either way, you'll hear from us in the emails if you're a Pyramix member. Or if you like the channel, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, you'll hear about it on YouTube too. And please do that. It helps support the channel and helps us keep doing this. So guys, thank you so much for everything. Thanks for tuning in and submitting your music, letting me um, yap about it and talk about it. Thank you for everybody for your comments and helping me out in the comment in the chat room. And we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Bye.